Hi, I'm Ray, G4NSJ. Look at this. This is an R209 Mark II B for Bravo reception set, it says on it. This was given to me the other day by a friend of mine. I used to do a lot of work on his military gear, but I've since retired, so I don't. Strange problem with this, which I will explain in a minute, or try to explain. It's quite an amazing... I remember these in uh, the 1960s in GWM Radio, Portland Road, Worthing. I remember seeing these on the shelf. They were quite expensive. Anyway, I was given this one for free, so I'm very happy with that. Right, uh, change of clothes every now and then, you'll see, because I'm doing this over a period of a few days. So let's get stuck into it. On FM, yes, it's, yes, that's right, it's got FM, which is odd. AM, nothing. On FM, you've got that. And you can hear some someone speaking there. Let me tune it. Okay, on AM, it's just just about there, but you can barely hear that. On this one, <clears throat> there's one valve up there. Can you see that one? Yeah. That's uh, a stabiliser, HT stabilising, neon type thing. There are three here. There's RF amplifier, mixer oscillator, and uh, oscillator. they mixer and oscillator. The two audio, two audio valves are down there. It's, it's very difficult to work on. And I was thinking, well, where are the other valves? Where are the IF amplifiers? I don't know where they are. <laughs> so I'm look, I've not worked on one of these before, as you can probably tell. So I'm looking around. No, I can't see any other valves. How strange. I found online the manual, and it says take this off, so I'll do that now. Take this off. Right, and then these units here Unplug. Now I've done this before, so I don't know what's going on. But, oh, look! <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. It's quite amazing. And in here, shall I undo this screw? I'll take some pictures in a minute, you know, a bit close up, so you can have a look. If I undo that screw, there. Just this. Oh. This lid comes off. Oh. <laughs> oh dear, it's all waxy and horrible. And look at that. That is the detector. It's a DAF91. Isn't that unusual? So you can take out the detector and you can change its little capacitors, which I will do, and whatever else, and then plug it back in. Isn't that unusual? Now, as there is noise on FM, it's working on FM, I'll talk about FM in a minute, but not AM, then I am assuming or deducing, there's a word, that it is the AM detector, which is this. The disappointing thing, it's a lovely receiver, well built, 1951, I believe. The disappointing thing are these valves, DAF91, they are the 1.4 volt heater uh, valves that are used in you know, little suitcase radios with the lid. I've never liked these valves because the heaters go pop. They probably won't in this because it hopefully is a proper 1.4 volt supply. So I'm assuming from the fault, uh, what you can hear or can't hear, something wrong with the detector. I'm hoping it's just a valve. Do you know I had a load of battery valves, all the DF, DAK and stuff, whatever they are, DK, and got rid of those. Don't need those anymore. Not doing battery radios. What I'm going to do is check the heaters, check the heater continuity on this. I will take pictures uh, just to make sure that the heaters, or well, the filament as it should be called on these little ones, these are directly heated. So the heater is the cathode. You don't have a heater and a separate cathode and you call that a filament. I'll check the filament in a minute on there. 
the, obviously everything's working, the tuning, the RF amp, the mixer oscillator, the IF, everything's working, audio is working, because when you switch to FM, you can hear it all. It's just AM that's not working. So the fault has to be here somewhere. The reason it's got FM, I was reading about this. I know nothing about it, so I'm only telling you what I've read. In the early days, for some reason, they thought what they would do, it's only shortwave, one to two megs, so the middle of the medium wave band, sorry, to 20 megs, one to 20 megs in three or four ranges. They thought that FM was a good mode of modulation, even on shortwave. I've never come across a sort of 40s or 50s FM shortwave transmitter. There must have been something that went with this. That's why it's got FM. Now, it hasn't got sideband. Obviously, these days, all amateur radio stuff is single sideband. This doesn't have that. What I was hoping to use this for is uh, shortwave broadcast stations. Should be good for that. And it covers half the medium wave band, of course. There's a loudspeaker in there. It's got a door. Look at that. You can close the door. <laughs> and there's a little latch. It's all, what do they call it? Herm hermetically waterproof sealed hermat I can't say the word you know what I mean but isn't that interesting a lovely little radio headphone socket on the front what I did was check the heaters the heaters are fine that valve in fact I even swapped the valve and I replaced a couple of 0.01s and a 0.1 capacitor in the little detector unit nothing that didn't work that wasn't the problem after a lot of head scratching and trying to work out what was going on, the audio output stage push pull two valves, two pentodes. Okay, that's normal, unusual in a radio like this, but fair enough. That's the way they do it. The uh, the abnormal thing was one of the push pull output valves had a diode in it for AGC, so it's audio derived AGC. And a lot of head scratching going on again. We what is going on? We've got one diode in the detector, okay, and another one in one of the audio output valves. Normally, as you know, a super head design, you've got IF, IF detector, which is normally a double triode, sorry, double diode triode. One diode is for audio, one diode is for AGC rail. The triode is the audio preamp, straightforward. Not in this one, no. One diode in the detector. Uh, and the other part of that valve is a pentode for FM discriminator. So I decided to buy, I spent nine pounds, struth. I bought an audio output valve with the one with the detector in it, the, the uh, diode in it. And I had a go on last night on 40 meters and this is what happened. So that's working pretty well. It's quite good. Switch to CW, obviously, to uh, to listen to SSB. It's it's quite good, as you saw, and it's pretty stable actually. Um, I was tuning in with the the VFO. There is you can adjust the, the BFO as well here, which make it, which is quite a fine adjustment. So that's rather good. This is on medium wave. Now, the strange thing is, let's turn that off for a minute. 
I think it's got various other problems. I don't think the RF amplifier is working properly. There's the tuning capacitor. Three separate valves, unusual. RF amp, mixer, oscillator. Normally the mixer oscillator is in one envelope, isn't it? But there we are again, strange design. Um, when I put the aerial on the RF amp, okay, you could hear the station as I did just then, bypass the RF amp, put it straight into the mixer. There's not a lot of difference. I don't think the RF amp's working properly. These valves are, well, what's this, 1951? Over 70 years old, like me. <laughs> Perhaps I need a new valve. And I'm just, anyway, I've ordered another valve, another RF amp. Funnily enough, that is a 6.3 volt heater valve. So it really is a mishmash of bits and pieces. What was it, an EF92? I can't remember what it was now. Yeah, EF92, RF pentode. And also what it, what gave me reason to suspect the RF amplifier, the aerial trimming coils here don't seem to do anything. So there's something not right there, but it's all coming together slowly. I'm quite pleased with it. It's all coming together. I've got to put the can back on the detector. I will be replacing other capacitors in the other, you know, the IF amp stage three if amplifiers four 60 kcs i think it said in the manual if you go to the website g4nsj.co.uk go to the main menu under communications receivers you will see the r209 i've got some photos there um and also the manual go to the bottom of the page click on manual and that will come up and you can have a, a proper look at the circuit and to see exactly what i'm talking about a nice bit of kit. I was just hoping to use it on uh, HF broadcast stations. But uh, now I've had to go on 40 metres and heard the sideband stations so well, it really does resolve sideband nicely. Uh, I probably use it as a, a general coverage receiver. But I'm worried about the RF amp. I can only get one station. Well, one and a half. <laughs> one at a very weak station on medium wave. That's not right. Uh, this is a... 100 foot end fed wire outside medium wave should be full so i don't know what's going on although 40 meters was pretty good so that's the situation so far here are a few photos the power supply by the way which you can see there that is 220 volts 110 volts 24 volts or 12 volts you can see the vibrator see that there the vibrator do you remember those? And look at that big selenium rectifier. I was going to replace that with diodes, silicon diodes, and I thought, no, 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 it works. I'll leave it alone, because also the voltage would rise. I haven't worked out exactly where the heater voltage comes from. It's DC, of course, because they're directly heated valves. I don't know where that comes from, but I don't want to start replacing old rectifiers with silicon diodes because the voltage will rise. So I've got to be careful there. The heaters will all go pop. Sorry, the filaments. Here are a few more photos. There's the top of the chassis. So you can see what's going on there. And the bottom of the chassis, the view underneath there. Just general view of the whole thing. It's really well built, actually. It's beautifully built. It, uh, it's a nice bit of kit well worth looking after and of course it's so small and compact it weighs a ton believe me it does weigh a, oh, a ton but it's a very nice compact unit the power supply is in here this metal box 12 screws 12 little uh, 6ba screws to get that out of there a little countersunk once got the cover off and then took a photo of the power supply I was going to change the smoothing capacitors, but at the moment it's all working. I just want to get everything working properly, the RF amp. One of the IF stages, um, there's, uh, let me show you, a bit of tape there. There's a little trimmer there and another one there. This trimmer here, it's been got at over the years. Someone's had a go at it. You know, why do people do it? 
oh I'll twiddle that with the wrong you know big screwdriver oh, I'll grunge that and then oh that didn't make any difference I don't know why people do it you know if if someone doesn't know what they're doing it's best to leave things alone when I was repairing and restoring vintage valve radios you know you get a customer bring a radio to me it was fine it just went off get it on the bench it wasn't fine it couldn't have been fine at all the valves were in the wrong places the IF cans have been twiddled the oscillator's been twiddled you know he's had a right go at it oh it only wants a valve it just went off it was working fine no it didn't no why do people lie <laughs> This chap didn't lie that gave me this. He said it had been working fine, which it, you know, with that fault put right, then on amateur band and stuff, it's working fine. It's just that I think the RF amp is down. Well, I think that'll do it for now. I could probably say a lot more about it, but uh, back on medium wave. That's a talk sport or something. So yes, working well except for the RF amp problem. I might make a, a follow-up video, I don't know. When the, I've ordered the valve, the RF amp, when that turns up, I'll, if that makes a vast difference, then I'll perhaps do a follow-up video. There we are, the R209. Lovely little receiver. Don't forget to go to the website, g4nsj.co.uk. Main menu, communications receivers, and this is listed there, the R209. Thanks for watching, see you again soon. Bye-bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.